We woke up early and uh, the preparations went on, but there was a slight delay. I can't really explain how that happened, but somehow we found ourselves um, running to beat time. I'm a crazy person. I've never stopped being crazy, whether it's my wedding day or whatever is going on. I like controlling everything around me and that doesn't help things because I'm sitting there getting my makeup done and calling people and asking, oh, has this happened? Has so-and-so shown up? Where is so-and-so and all that? I'm so happy for having been honored by my last born daughter who is Beth and uh, I, I just don't know how to express. My feelings. It's a parent that walks you down the aisle and my dad has not been around for a long time. That is my dad and my mom and both of them under her skin. So she'll walk me down the aisle. She, she represents my father's spirit because my father passed on when I was very young. We've been through a lot of hard times. Yeah, ma, we hustled together through college and, exactly. and all that. And mm -hmm. we've, we are very good friends. Mm -hmm. we almost like sisters. interviews and giving everyone everything they need and then someone says it's 10 minutes past 10 and everything just went crazy I didn't want anyone to touch me I didn't want anyone to do anything I wanted to fix every everything myself because in my head I imagined I can do it first <laughs> first if I do it myself I don't want anyone to touch my veil I don't want anyone to you know I'll just do that my on, on my own the thing that really like sent me over the edge was oh Fred is here and they've been here since 8.30. I said, really? No one could tell me that they were waiting outside? I've said here. No, why can't because anyone talk to me? Where is my phone? Oh, sir, I'm a I'm a I'm I'm a I knew that the limo and the other cars would be there, whatever we were using would be there early. So someone confused that their presence for them being around. So we are rushing and running at 10 past 10 and getting everyone together and the girls are walking out. And then one of my, my girlfriends, T, comes back and says, that's not Fred. Fred. Fred is not here. It is 10 past 10. We had agreed he'll show up at 9. You know, because the, everyone had told me the bride runs late. If the bride runs late, everything falls back. Once we got into the car from where I was to where she was, the driver took control of the situation. He got there, um, you know, faster than I expected. When we got there, um, the best, I, uh, I gave the best man three envelopes, which he was supposed to use to get the girl. Traditionally, that is what is supposed to be done. Uh, the bride's mom and uh, the aunt and the grandma and each one of them were given envelopes and now they it's like they let go of the girl we got there at 10 30. um we were supposed to be there at 9 30. my mom has raised me my mom is my dad and my mom and um she's always fred knows for any man to accommodate me it's a double package my mom has to be she is such a central part of my life, so for her to do that, her putting the veil over me is almost like her saying, it's now okay, you can go marry somebody else. And it, it takes a lot of strength for her to do that with a smile on her face. And it was very, very emotional for me. Yeah, it was very beautiful. 
me and her, we are such, you know, people assume we are such strong people, but deep down inside, we are mushy and soft. And so we cried, and then my mom is like, oh my God, look at us crying. If someone catches us, oh Lord, you know, we are supposed to be tough and not tearing up. My mom is a trooper. It's, um, it's always been me and her against the world. Now it's me and Fred against the world. Maids went first. I don't know where the girls were, the flower girls. I don't remember. They were too far ahead for me to see, I think, too, down the stairs and already around the bend. So the girls went down and then I came out. I didn't see her get in the car. I don't know what I was looking at, but I kept on waiting for her to come in. My, one of my brothers told me that she had got in the limousine. I was happy it's there and it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's, it, they had, the interior had been done, you know, to specification to go with the theme of our wedding. And the girls were excited and they were opening the champagne before we even let, you know. So it was interesting. And then I realized when I was in the limo that 50 gift bags had been left behind. Mbona meta gift bags uko? Aa meta more than 50 gift bags. Mlichukua zenye zilikuwa kwa ile room ingine next to the bathroom. And everybody can guess how that went. If you're messing up such a simple inst you know instruction just get the gift bags into the car. How are you going to handle the rest of the day? I don't hold on to anger. I express and move on. She arrived first. We, uh, we, we were following each other. for a little over a year so for it to finally it all boils down to that one moment so I was just excited yeah finally it's here I hope everything is fine I looked out I saw that the arc had been really well done and I knew like if the arc is looking that good everything else must be good and I'm feeling happy my mom is excited and you know we just I was happy at that moment I felt nothing but joy I gave uh, the MC the flash disk with about 10 songs. Now when I gave him the flash disc, he didn't go home and look at which song is number what. So he came out and said, do you know which numbers? I said, no. And then he said, you know what? We'll just, we'll man it. We'll, whatever song comes out, we'll play it. And I said, I'm not walking down that aisle if you're not playing my song. So he said, just get mine right. You can mess up everybody else. But then my mom said, this is not a good time to overthink. You just, you, you look happy. Are you feeling happy? Yes. Don't mess it up because of music. You can always edit that out of video. You can always, you know, it's not something that is permanently there. You can put some, some music you like over it so that you can remember, you know, the way you want it. So I'm sitting there and I just relaxed and decided uh, this, is what they, this is what they meant when they say just go with the flow. I love Arabic music and I love Amri Diab. It's, uh, it's about the beauty of love and uh, it's a description of, a, of a, a woman he loves and how deep her soul is through her eyes. So 
just exactly what I was waiting for because I hadn't seen her dress and uh, I was just thinking to myself it better be nice <laughs> considering the amount of money I've coughed off. I was so happy with the decor that like that was where my eye was focused and it looked right like the sides looked right my mom was here my, you know my fiance was there two favorite people in the world I'm happy I'm excited and then I see one of the page boys with white shoes <laughs> And me being me, I never postpone an issue. If I have an issue with you right now, I don't give a prayer is being said. We will try and square it and then continue with the prayer. That's how it's always been. Now me not saying anything about the white shoes was me practicing probably the biggest amount of restraint I have ever in any discussion. <laughs> I want to speak to you about choices. In life, we make choices. You can choose to be a good man or a bad man. So he comes from Church of Christ, which, is, which doesn't have an office in Nairobi yet, or we don't know of. And I come from Friends, Quakers, which has an office in Nairobi and a big church here, but they wouldn't officiate the wedding because I'm the bride. So they needed for his church to officiate the wedding and so we were stranded so a friend of ours worships at uh, pastor kenga's church so she did talk to him and say could you please do them a favor they are stranded and he I, I, apparently this is a very common thing that if you live outside the country for too long and you don't have a mother church here then when you're marrying here you necessarily don't have a pastor to officiate your wedding and you know you you have to get a certified pastor to do it and pastor kenga has done this for a lot of people so when we contacted him and asked he said let's skype we had we talked to him and he listened to or whatever he did talk to our church pastors they had an agreement of how things will run and then we we did the premarital counseling with him uh over the course of three or so months so we know him pretty well when you choose you do it willingly i'm sure where you guys were cutting we were not there no when things are thick, I've chosen to be there. When my wife doesn't seem to be like the one that I, I was waiting for, as you people normally sing, the one you waited for, you know? I still choose to be with her. When he talked about patience, and he, he said that it's, it's the good and the bad. You can't pick and say, I'm in for the good. You, it's a deal that you, you sign in your head, you program it to be, it's a permanent thing. If it goes sour or oh well, too bad, sweeten it and move on. And he says he wants for me to be the Proverbs 31 kind of a wife. For me, the biggest lesson that I learned was the fact that we are now one. We are not, you know, separate. Now we are one thing. And um, when it comes to making decisions, then it has to be the two of us making decisions. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mother Beth, and I'm of the opinion that they get married. Araka san. Araka Amen. And then they make a happy, a happy home. They love one another, and they make a happy family. Amen. And a happy, they have a happy marriage. Amen. Thank you very much, so much. Thank Amen. you so much. Amen. God Amen. bless you, Fred and Beth. Amen. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, next. The fact that the mother gave her to me, in the presence of everyone, that was such a big honor. I am the father of Fred. I married him. I married his, his mother 26 years ago. The day is perfect, and I'm so pleased that they are getting married. Amen. It's wonderful. Amen. Now, Thank you. Beth, Atiabila, Kamila, Mudaki. 
We do have this man to be wedded husband to live together after God's holy ordinance in the holy earth of matrimony. Will you submit to him? I was listening to the vows and the pastor had said the vows out. Me, I have issues with some things. Oh, be submissive. Be what? Are you kidding me? I've worked for years trying to be independent and on my own. Why would I want to bow down to somebody else? I always have that, you know, the feministic part of me, me wanting to defend the woman. And so having heard the vows before the day helped me think about it, helped the pastor interpret things to me. So when I said them, I meant every single word I said because I knew what every single word meant. I, Fred Machage Haywood Ondiko. Thank you, Fred Machage Haywood Ondiko. To have and to hold for better or for worse. But in riches and in poverty. Standing with you in trial. Rejoicing with you in victories. All these people have gathered in your presence, listening to you make vows, and then you wake up tomorrow and you're caught cheating, you're caught disrespecting, you're caught hitting, you're caught. You know, like to me, it's just. Why did you even bother spending that money and that time? And then putting words out that you can't bring back in. I'm a literature teacher. It's very, words are very important to me. People do take words very lightly. I take words very seriously. My word is my bond. And I would never say something behind your back I wouldn't say to your face. To me, those vows are very important. Every single word meant a lot to me. From this day forward? From this day forward. And there too? And there too? I give you my vow. I give you my vow. Let's clap for her. Um, I let her sign the certificate first, so that it doesn't look like I'm in a hurry to sign the certificate. <laughs> I, I let her look as the one who was in a hurry to sign. I love signatures and words. My friends think I'm crazy. If my friend calls up and says, oh, can I borrow this, this much to do this? I always say, I love you, my friend, but can we put a sign on it? Because I take signatures very seriously, and for me to sign that paper, was not just, oh, let me sign, it was to me sealing a deal. It's the same feeling that I felt when she, say, uh, when she said, I do, I will, and uh, she put the ring on my finger. Known for throwing a good party, and for all my parties, I've always had a theme. And it's always been, if you love me enough, you try to come, you know, within the theme. And if you know you can't, please give me a heads up. But I did mention that, please, ladies, do show up. Try and show up in dresses, because I've seen people come to people's weddings with jeans. It's rude. And I'm going to be stuck with the video and pictures for a lifetime. We don't want to be looking at people and thinking, Lord, those atrocious jeans. I, I, did, I asked nicely. I said, ladies, please try and show up in dresses. And men, we request that you dress for had agreed with Safari Park they would serve the waiters, there was a waiter at every table. The waiters would serve the soup uh, on the table and then everything else would be buffet. But you know with buffet, people wait for instruction. And unfortunately the MC was not around and we didn't know. It was close to two hours. And then we come out and we ask, what? I, I sent my sister in law, I said find out and she said the MC is not here. And I was livid. I said, what do you mean the MC is not here? And they said he's been missing for a little bit. And that was probably our fault. He had to pick his own instruments from the ceremony ground to here. And that took him a little bit of time. <laughs> the, the women came out to meet us and then Fred really let loose. <laughs> he really enjoyed that music part. Thank God for that whole lapse of the MC being 
you know, having gone to get the instruments, because then we had a chance to have lunch with everyone. It gave us an opportunity to really sit down, enjoy the meal, because everyone else was also enjoying their meal. So there was no rush. <laughs> mom's speech my mom is a talker like me so yeah the usual be good to each other take but i love my mom is like me she means what she says and if she doesn't like you she will tell you right up front there's no two way about it and for her to say fred i love you meant a lot to me marriage no, is not a bed of roses it has some ups and downs but you have to to bear with them you sit down solve problems for yourselves Thank for the for the respect you've given the whole clan and the whole community and even Kenya's life at large as a, a, a nation. Thank you so much. I love you both of you. And my grandma, my grandma doesn't speak much Swahili. She really put her Swahili together for us <laughs> that day, and she did say beautiful things, and that was was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> My stepmom came and said, Oh, you know, uh, I'm so happy that now I have she put um fanikazi. And people are like, oh, you know, that kind of response. But I know and she knows that she didn't mean to say I'm Fanyikazi, but since it was a direct translation from mother, mother tongue to Swahili, she meant somebody to help. Who, to help. Yeah. <laughs> And then my dad, um, he was very, very emotional. He's the person I've known as a father ever since I was born because my biological dad passed away, what, just a few months before I was, I was born. I never really got to meet him. And uh, during the ceremony, he wasn't able to say everything that he wanted to because he was overwhelmed. Uh, with emotions and he's been in Kenya now for over 26 years. I am the father of Fred. I married his mother. I married his, his mother 26 years ago. The day is perfect and I'm so pleased that they are getting married. It's Amen. wonderful. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So at the reception, he wanted to talk of, you know, when he met my mom and when he met me for the first time. But considering that my mom passed away in uh, 2011, he still feels uh, very emotional about talking about uh, her passing away. So. He was overwhelmed with emotions, and so he didn't really finish his uh, speech. He went back and sat down. Best fruit cake I ever ate, ever. We had just agreed on the flavor. What she did on top was entirely her idea, and it was amazing. It looked good, it tasted good, it just Fabulous cake. It was too much strength. They went right past everyone to the very back, and then the MC was like, No, 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 we have someone has to catch it. I don't want anyone picking it off of the ground. So he brought it back again and I threw it. Oh God, girls. It was in tatters. It just torn, like, <laughs> it was devoured. You know, it just, yeah. 
and then eventually someone got the biggest <laughs> part of it and that was the yay i hope you invite me to your wedding then we went for the evening photo shoot mm -hmm. and then we came uh, to the room and uh, did a small photo shoot too and then changed and that took a little bit because the photo shoot and everything so the party was to begin at 7 and we were done changing by 8 30. A lot of people would probably think it's, uns it's, it's not sensible to spend that much on a wedding. It is a lot of money, but it's a once in a lifetime thing. You want to do it once, you want to do it right. And even at the beginning when I started getting a little extravagant, saying I want this and I want that and I want that, Fred said, you know what, I'm doing okay right now and I have a bit of extra change, but I think in 10 years I will have a lot of extra change. Can we just do a really beautiful 10th year anniversary? And they say, no one remembers a fabulous anniversary. Everybody remembers a fabulous wedding. So to me, <laughs> to me, it was not, it was, anniversary is not a wedding. It's remembrance of a wedding. So I said, I'd rather sacrifice whatever I have in saving and whatever he has and put it together and have a really fantastic day. And stuff I love and stuff I enjoy and really just, feel good about my, my, my wedding and I think I've talked about my memory and how my memory is very powerful and it has to be a certain way and now my memory is right. I will remember my wedding as the most fabulous day in my entire living and that's how I want it for it to be. Just our dream that came alive from planning, hard work and a lot of extra change. We did make a request and say please keep the gifts minimal. Just something compact, something we can take away, something we can use, something. So most people preferred to give their gift in an envelope. So tons of envelopes. And uh, we're not, we are not mad about that. <laughs> it was quite, quite uh, generous. We, we are not done opening the envelopes, but so far, it's quite, quite a bit of money. So I know that we can't talk numbers now, can we? That's rude. <laughs> That's true, but I would say it's a com it is quite a, a good amount, and it will go a long way helping us recover. But the gift I loved the most was my grandma's. My grandma said, "I can't give you money. I can't give you anything. I will give you a gift because I want you to remember. I want you to use it, and every time you use it, I want you to think of me." So she brought me um, a rechargeable um, lamp. lamp. Mm -hmm. And it's so functional, especially if you're going to places of the village or camping, and we love camping. We love hiking, mountain climbing, that is very handy. You know, you say that no one is too rich to receive here and too poor to give. Um, there is this guy at home, uh, for a very long time, uh, he was my, what, what can I call him? He is your handyman. He is my handyman. And so I never really thought that he could give anything. And so when we opened the gift, we found this really nice, nicely done um, slate with a writing on it about marriage. And it was such a sweet message, really, really nice and thoughtful of him. <laughs> this is two days after the wedding. Two days after the wedding, good. I feel married. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel that it's the thing that I've been waiting for since I proposed to her. Okay. I always yeah. did tell people, there's two things you can't explain to someone. 
you can't explain how it feels like to be black and to be a woman. It's a very unique feeling. It's the same feeling you, you, with being married. Once you do, yeah, you say yes, I do, or whatever. It just is a very unique feeling. You can't explain. It's just nice. It's a good feeling. Only a bride can tell how it does feel like to be married, especially if you've been looking forward to it.